so I have a, a contrarian market outlook for 2022. Uh, as I'm recording this, this is uh, May 3rd of 2022. I'm feeling some stuff happening in the market. I've been doing a lot of research, uh, reading up on supply chains and logistics. And, you know, this is really in response to what I'm dealing with every single day in, in real estate development world or to some of our construction projects. It feels like whack-a-mole, like we whack and solve one problem and two more pop up. And so I've been trying to get a better understanding on what's going on in the market dynamics and everybody's screaming inflation, inflation, inflation. And I know that even last year or two years ago, 2020 and 2021, I was on that inflationary train that the market is going to show a, um, a lot of inflation. Not shocking, there's lots of inflation in the market. However, this is what I'm starting to see in response, the Fed increased interest rates. And actually they're probably the trailing indicator of this, the, the, the equities markets and the bonds markets price in these anticipatory things like the rising inflation. And so the Fed increasing the rate or saying they're going to increase the rate is actually the, the final kind of nail in the coffin of proving that these indicators are true. And so what has happened and what I'm looking at is we've already trended over peak CPI inflationary numbers. So we're actually going to start seeing inflation drop down. We're seeing this in a lot of different factors. Number one is residential spending consumers spending on their houses. So in 2020, 2021, when people were home more, they were doing their work from home, they spent a lot of money on items around their house. They bought a new sofa, they did their deck project, they painted their house, they did reflooring because they were spending a lot more time at home and Home Depot stocks and, and Lowe's and the home improvements and, and a lot of the market dynamics really were bolstered by that, the, the residential spending. as fears of recession as though that free money that came out from the government has kind of waned and that QE has lessened, demand is lessening. People are buying less stuff, less items. And so we're seeing this in rail car loading, how many rail cars are being filled up. We see this in the ports and at least in California and uh, the East Coast, those are normalizing. There's currently a lot of things going on in Ukraine with Russia, China with Shanghai and, and you know Shenzhen being locked down for COVID and zero cases. So that may cause some, some additional volatility in the market overall. So that hasn't been fully baked out, but what we're seeing is that starting to trend down. And the bigger macro play that I'm seeing are a couple of things. I was actually just talking with one of my contractors they have probably $100 million in projects queued up for next year. And they're saying we've seen probably 70% of those fall off, or we don't think those projects are going to happen next year because of the interest rate increases, because of supply chain issues and the volatility of it. So those projects are pausing or canceling. And so that means 70% of the future work and the supply and the demand that was gonna need for two by fours and appliances and all those other things is not going to exist. There will be some alternative, some pullback in, in those pricing and especially around the labor pricing. So some projects will still go through. And so what was, you know, a hundred million may end up being 50 million. So that is what I'm seeing as the possibility of trending over and the data supports that. The data supports that a decline in future demand, the inflation numbers were based on demand staying relatively constant as everything is getting more expensive, people aren't buying those extra things. And so that's where I see this toggling down China. And I don't know if people remember seeing the headlines of Evergrande or a lot of the Chinese developers and REITs. They've been developing a lot of product in their country, real estate product, building cities that are empty, just building them to build them. And part of that is because the CCP, the, the, the Communist Party of China needs to keep people employed in China. And that is their number one thing. People can't revolt if they're working. And so as long as they keep people gaining 
gainfully employed, that's good for their country as a whole. And not to say that we don't do those same things in the United States, but how do we keep, and how does China keep people employed? Well, they're doing it and producing a lot of stuff and that bolstered their GDP. Well, as their credit markets tighten, as Evergrande or some of these other real estate holding companies falter and they're overbuilding of their market, will cause a, a little bit more of a seismic shift to the overall commodity market in construction because they've been building at such a rapid pace, they slow down, they start demoing some of these cities, they tighten the uh, debt in which these developers can get. And if there's some fluctuation in the real estate prices in China, I see that as a benefit to the overall commodity price on construction, iron ore, copper, concrete, gypsum, all of those things that we kind of needed that were trending upwards in a, in a kind of a very parabolic rate. So that is where I'm seeing as that demand falls off, as China and on the macro uh, elements wane from some of their demand, the inflationary numbers in next quarter are not gonna show up what they think they're going to be. And then subsequent the next quarter after that, and so it is going to need to be very much a reverse to what the Fed is doing. So they're not gonna raise the rates, the amount that they are saying they're going to raise them right now. And then, I don't know if it's summer or the end of the year, coming into the end of the year, they're actually going to to talk about redoing stimulus, printing more money, buying more bonds, and then that will start you know, causing, it's not instantaneous, it will take a little bit of a momentum of a swing. So it looks likely, statistically speaking, we're heading for a recession, two quarters in a row of, of negative uh, or declining GDP. Because that inflation and those demand numbers, we've already had Q1 negative, we're going to have, I believe, Q2 also be negative, and subsequently from a economic Economic standpoint, the technical details. What does that mean for real estate? What does that mean for investors that have now been listening to me go on? Real estate is actually going to be a really good play. And the potential of when things are priced in to the opposite, when you're playing a contrarian approach to that, is you can take advantage of when things are mispriced. So if a bunch of supply doesn't come on next year because these projects are canceling and interest rates go up, you know, and this, and a lot of people think the the future is worse, they're not going to build some of these projects. Well, we're undersupplied in the residential world, you know, the units that are needed from birth and immigration and other things related to the country. And so I see that there's a fundamentally pretty strong case that solid assets and real estate is going to do very, very well over the next few years, even though the bigger economy is going moving sideways or a little bit down and, and really triggering what is a recession from the statistical standpoints. Look for that this summer. Look for that in Q3, the Fed reducing or changing the amount of interest in which they say they're going to do. And then the potential of if that's Q3, the end of the year, them starting to talk about stimulus again, because I think we're moving into a bigger macro environment that demand and GDP is weakening overall, especially as the US dollar strengthens on the global scale.